This is Ricky Harbor with Subside Electronics. This video will show you how to use the locator configuration utility to configure your UtilaGuard's standard or advanced receivers and transmitters. We will also show you how this utility can be used to keep any of your UtilaGuard receivers and transmitters up to date with the latest firmware. Let's begin by opening the configuration utility software. If your computer is connected to the internet, the software will communicate with the subsite server checking for new updates. If an update is found, a window will appear asking if you would like to download it. Select Yes to allow it to download and install to your computer. Once it is installed, you will not have to be connected to the internet to update your receivers and transmitters. Now it is time to connect our receiver or transmitter to our PC. Start by plugging the USB cable into your computer and the receiver or the transmitter. This cable is supplied with each UtilaGuard unit. Allow time for the USB drivers to load and then select the connect button. Allow some time for the software to connect to your UtilaGuard. Once connected, it will show what version is loaded on the device. If it is older than the current available version, then click on the update button to load the latest. While this is going through the programming process, let's talk about some of the other items we see on this page. The other item that we see is our password protect device. This gives us the ability to password protect both the receiver and or the transmitter so that other users cannot change the configuration. Up here along the top, you have the software update tab, which we are on, our configuration tab, our screen capture tab, the splash screen tab, and the help tab. I will talk about each of those as we come to them. The software has completed the programming phase and is now in the verification phase. Now as we can see our green bar has gone all the way across and our programming was a success. If we reconnect to our receiver now it should so show that we have the same software version as the current version. Green check is good. Now let's move up and talk about the individual tabs again. Starting with the configuration tab. I'm going to select the load factory defaults so that all of our factory default settings come in and then we'll talk about these individually. This is a how the standard and advanced receivers go out from the factory. We're going to talk about each of these individually as far as the different columns and then we'll get into the additional tabs. You notice that we have three tabs up top frequencies, custom frequencies, and settings. We're going to continue with the frequencies tab beginning with the actual frequency located in the first column. The second column is the name. You can customize it, but you have to stay within a maximum of five characters. The next column is the available column. This means that it's going to be available either in the receiver or the transmitter, depending on which device you're configuring. You notice that I have both devices here. We can configure both sides simultaneously. Set everything up so that when we 
finish one, we can go right to the next. But the enable button means that, or column means that it's available in the device as well as enabled for selection. Okay, let's look at these columns associated with our receiver compatibility. We have our line locate mode column. Each of these frequencies that is checked would be available in the line locate mode. This would also include the auto gain mode. We have the beacon mode. As you can see, there's not as many check marks on those frequencies. And then we have the passive power mode. You notice that you have a power column here on the receiver, but not for the transmitter. Because this is a passive mode, we're only using the receiver. We're picking up the passive frequency or the electrical frequency that's associated with uh, power lines. Then into our transmitter compatibility columns. It gives us the ability to select or deselect. And we've done some customization as far as the ability to uh, use different ways of applying that signal to the target line. For example, 256 hertz, we can use direct connect method or a broadband clamp, but it's not available to use in a standard clamp or induction clamp. Any of the grayed out areas are not selectable. As we scroll down into the higher frequencies, for example, 8.01 kilohertz is available and enabled. It is a line locate mode but we don't use it in beacons. We can choose to use that with and apply it to our target line via direct connect with a standard induction clamp with induction or broadcast as well as using the broadband clamp. Now let's move over to custom frequencies. To add a custom frequency is very easy. We can go in there and just type in the frequency we want to add. And then we'll tell it what kind of frequency it is. It is available. I want it enabled. I don't want to use it as a line frequency. I want to use it as a power frequency. And then I select OK. Now this is available to use in the receiver. Our next selection is our settings tab. This gives us the ability to configure the settings in both the receiver and the transmitter. And the reason I would want to do that as well as all of these frequencies, because I have the ability to once I've done everything, I can save my configuration to either a disk to my laptop, to my PC, and use it to configure multiple units or to reconfigure if something happens to my unit later down the road. I've got my saved configuration. I can reload it and have it ready to go very shortly. So let's go ahead and make our selections for our receiver and transmitter. Uh, we're going to stay with English. On the depth units, I'm going to keep it at feet and inches. Backlight, we're going to select auto. There is a photo eye on the top of the receiver, on the keypad, that when you get in low light conditions, it will automatically turn on the backlight. I like to have the shutdown timer set to five minutes. That means five minutes after the last button press on the receiver the unit will shut down this will help conserve battery life i'm going to select 60 hertz because we're in north america depending on the country that you're in you may choose 60 hertz or 50 hertz 
I like manual gain, uh, but let's talk about both. Semi-auto, uh, if you select semi-auto, when you hit the up or down arrow, it will automatically take the receiver to half scale or mid-range on the signal strength, whereas manual gain will increase or decrease the gain one decibel at a time. Uh, you can select auto depth or manual depth. Auto depth, whenever you uh, get right over the line and the left-right arrows become a diamond, then it will automatically give you a depth. You can still force a depth manually, or you can choose manual depth to where you have to press the uh, depth button each time you want to receive one. I'm going to choose and turn the offset depth on. You may want to choose to turn it off. I'm going to select pitch and classic for the audio mode and audio style. That's my personal preference. But I encourage you to go through each one, listen to it, and see which one you prefer. And then I'm going to select my volume level to start off at level 2 in mid-range. I can select the modes and the antenna. So if, I, if I'm not going to use all of the modes, just have to select the ones that I want to use. Do I want to use the line locate mode, the auto gain, the power mode? If I don't want to use beacon, I can leave it unchecked. And same with radio. But I'm going to go ahead and check those for now. And then my last selection over here for the receiver is I have to select at least one antenna to get a check mark. But I can choose any or all of the antennas. Since I am using the beacon mode, I'm going to go ahead and select total field. I'm going to choose to leave the null antenna off because I will be running with the left right arrows and the left right guidance arrows is a product of the null antenna so I am seeing it at that time so I'm going to choose to leave it off so I don't have to cycle through it then over on my transmitter I'm going to select my language do I want the volume on or muted I always suggest to run the advanced meter because you want to be able to see the line resistance information because that can tell you a lot about uh, the condition of your target line and whether you're getting a good signal down that line. I'm going to leave the backlight turned off, but I still have to select uh, how many seconds the timer runs. My shutdown timer, I'm going to run it at two hours. I'm going to disable my direction enabled feature. There are additional videos that talk about direction enabled. My high output timer, I'm going to select 10 minutes. That's any time you're using a 12 watt transmitter and you're using high output, you need to put a timer on that. I'm going to enable my dual output for my advanced receiver. I want to use the red lead as my default and I'm going to turn the radio on. Now that I've got everything checked, I've got a green box there. I am now going to save this configuration and I'm going to go ahead and save it to the desktop and I'm going to call this the video if I can spell video test configuration now as I come back make sure I'm still connected to my receiver so I'm going to hit connect again let it reconnect it says I am connected to the receiver I'm going to the configuration page I'm going to load that configuration from the disk there is the one I wanted to that I saved and now I'm ready to write it to the receiver that I'm plugged into 
It is now writing the frequencies and then the settings. It is now complete. We're ready to go. That's how simple it is to configure your receiver and or transmitter. Let's go through these other tabs real quickly. Your screen capture tab gives you the ability to capture any screen that might be currently up on your receiver or your transmitter. You could utilize this for multiple reasons, either to uh, capture screenshots if you're building your own training material. Once you capture the screenshot, then you can save that image. The next tab is the splash screen and I'm going to go to photos. I've saved them in there under my splash screen folders and I'm going to just pull in the default one and I'm going to press send and it's going to send that bitmap to the uh, to your receiver or your transmitter it gives you the ability to customize it so that every time when you power the unit up or power it down, your logo, your address appears, your phone number. This can help uh, identify it as your unit. The next tab is the Help tab. And as you can see, this gives us all the additional information as we went through in all the different tabs on how to connect, how to do a software update, how to password protect your unit, how to configure, how to perform a screen capture, and how to load your splash screens. This is, gives you some additional information that's extremely important that I didn't talk about, and that is your splash screens must be a specific size. And as you can see right here, the transmitter must be a 400 by 240 pixel bitmap, while the receiver must be a 320 by 240 pixel bitmap. I hope this video has been beneficial. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact your local Ditchwitch dealer or your subsite product support group. Thanks for watching.